Hey guys, you remember that reggae girl that got taken out in half a tree by allegedly her lover or something to that effect? I think they were, it was one evening, they were all at the limelight and somebody must have taken somebody's phone looking at it and some tassel up and the knife came into play. However, it seems like it's in the court now because the investigator who probed the 2019 takeout of national senior women's footballer Terania Plum Plum Clark on Wednesday told a Supreme Court judge and jury that 23-year-old Rochelle Foster, who is being tried for the killing, claimed ownership of the murder weapon, but said she only had it on her purse for protection based on where she lived and had not meant to stab and kill her close friend. Clark, a rising star in the sporting arena, was stabbed and killed during a reported dispute over a cell phone about 8.50 p.m. at the Limelight Plaza in Half a Tree, St. Andrew. The detective constable taking the stand for the first time during the trial in the Home Circuit Division of the Supreme Court in downtown Kingston said on the night in question, after leaving the scene where he collected the bloodied three-star ratchet knife, he spoke with Foster at the Half a Tree Police Station. He said Foster was so sad and she was clad in a white polka dot top and red skirt. Upon being addressed by him, said, me never mean to stab her. I just my phone me did want. However, he told the court that when he showed the young woman the knife, he retrieved from the scene and asked her if it belonged to her. She said, yes, it is mine. I have it for my protection. According to the police, she said she had the knife based on where she lived as she travels late at night on a dirt track road, so it was kept in her bag. He told the court that he then left the station and travelled to the Kingston Public Hospital where the body of the footballer had been taken and then the Tranquility Funeral Home in downtown Kingston before returning to the station where Foster, on seeing him, repeated under caution, me never mean to stab her, I just my phone me did want. The detective constable said the day after the incident he recorded a statement from the accused in which she spoke of the altercation over the phone which she said she had purchased for the footballer. In the statement which was read into the records for the court after being tendered and accepted as evidence, Foster claimed that Clark had complained that the phone was dropping signal and said she told the footballer to return the phone to her but she kept saying no when they met up the evening. I keep trying to get the phone from her but because she is more masculine than me I could not. So there was a pushing altercation. I pulled a knife I carried with me for protection because of the area I have to walk through to get home. She was stabbed the statement said. Foster further said after stabbing her friend she threw the knife down, rushed with her outside to the Portmore bus stop screaming for help but nobody helped us. According to the cop, in her statement, Foster said she was by then crying and trying to flag down vehicles to get assistance. But in realizing that no one was stopping, she laid the injured footballer down on the ground and ran to the half a tree police station where she begged for help. She reportedly said when no member of the police force moved to her aid, she began running back to the spot only to be colored by a cop who informed her that he received information that she was a suspect in the stabbing. She then said, I did not intentionally hurt Terania. Early on Wednesday, another police witness, a deputy superintendent of police who interviewed Foster the day after the murder said when she saw the accused, she was still clad in the outfit from the night before with what appeared to be the blood of the footballer on her. The deputy superintendent told the court that she escorted Foster to a bathroom at the police station where she allowed her to change into fresh clothes which had been brought by her parents. The skirt and blouse, she said, were packaged separately and sealed and labeled. The cop said she again identified herself to Foster and interviewed her. She told the court that when she informed Foster of the allegations tears streamed from the eyes of the then 20 year old 
She said in seeing the tears, she cautioned her and gave her a minute to collect herself before asking her what took place on the night of the murder. She said in inquiring of Foster the kind of relationship she had with Clark, the accused said she was a close friend of the deceased from 2016. She said Foster, after explaining how the altercation had come to be, when asked how many stabs she had given the deceased, replied one or two. The deputy superintendent of police under cross examination by defense attorney Courtney Rowe insisted that Foster did not cry while giving her caution statement but only did so during their preliminary meeting. She also dismissed a suggestion by the attorney that his client had told her she and Clark had been involved in an intimate relationship. She did not tell me that. I asked her what, but she did not tell me that the witness said. When Roe prodded further with, I'm suggesting to you that she did, the cop said, no, she did not. I asked her because I had concerns, but she said to me that she was a close friend. The trial will resume on the 15th of January at 10 a.m. before Supreme Court Judge Justice Leighton Pusey and a seven member jury. This is such a sad case because based on information that I've gotten the time when kind of you can you them all hang out out there and so on and thing. And I remember a co-worker say her daughter was out there as well and was telling her that them loving them are friends you know and so on you know. But the thing with having a weapon on you is if you have a knife on you or any other implements. As even if you joke around with somebody you don't mean to do something, you find yourself end up drawing it. And that makes it seem like, you know, premeditated when really and truly you had it on you for whatever else reason. And you might have dry it just to gain a bit of power like say, listen man, I possibly can do this. When really and truly you do not intend to do it. But somehow when the devil get in the mix, the and reach where it reach and do where it do. And this is the end result and so on you understand because i did hear from the beginning that they were lovers indeed however there was an eyewitness who was the first to take the stand in the home circuit division of the supreme court when the trial began on monday who told the court that on the evening in question there was an argument between the reggae girl and the accused in that argument the witness said foster accused Clark of deliberately ignoring her calls. The witness said Clark responded by saying her phone was acting up and that other individuals were all so experiencing difficulties contacting her. You know them jealous thing there. However, the witness said Foster lunged forward and tried to grab the phone from Clark who pushed her hand away. She said Foster then brandished a knife and stabbed the footballer in her side. The court was told that when Clark gasped, You stabbed me? Foster reported and said, Me will do it again and stabbed her a second time. The witness then described for the court the frantic efforts it took to get help for the footballer who was pronounced at the hospital. On Thursday, defense attorney Courtney Rowe continued his cross-examination to the police investigator to ask over what he said were suspicious omissions and questions the cop about his failure to mention that he spoke to the witness in a shop where other individuals connected to the case were in earshot. Nowhere in your statement did you mention that you spoke to an eyewitness, the sole eyewitness, Roe asked. When the witness replied, I never mentioned it at all in my statement, Roe shot back, and the reason you never mention it in your statement is because it never happened. Do you agree or disagree? The officer said, I disagree. Firmly, Roe further grilled the detective mercilessly about the 
absence of any reference to the account of the eyewitness in his own statement or in his listing of statements in the preliminary report contained in the file which was handed over to the case registry. The detective, however, maintained that he had mentioned in his statement that he got information from individuals on the scene but did not specify what he received from the sole witness to testify in court. You are saying she is your sole eyewitness, but you are saying it is not prudent to mention in your statement that you spoke to her, Roe asked theatrically. I spoke to several persons on the plaza, the officer said, but I did not mention anyone specific, the cop maintained. When Roe persisted with, did you deliberately leave it out, sir? The sloot coolly retorted, no. It was not deliberately done. Rowe then proceeded to question the integrity of the statement of the two justices of the peace who gave evidence in the trial this week, accusing the detective who was the scribe of affixing his signature to statements that mirrored each other, describing them as words for word and identical. He further contended that the statement written by the cop about the incident as told to him by foster omitted key details she spoke about i am suggesting to you that what you wrote is a condensed version of what she said to you after she gave you her version you told her you were going to write a summary of all she said wrote charged the officer in the meantime further disagreed with the suggestion from the attorney that his client had told him that she and Clark had been involved in an intimate relationship. She was asked the question, but she didn't answer it. The cop insisted. His response was the same given by three other witnesses who took the stand before him in response to the same question by Roe. He further dismissed suggestions by the attorney that Foster in giving her statement had said she did not realize Clark had been stabbed until after Clark lifted her shirt. The cop however said Foster had told him that after she realized that Clark was wounded she immediately threw down her knife. Asked if Foster had expressed remorse at the beginning of her statement the investigator replied no at the end she did. Clark was a rising star in the sporting arena and was stabbed and killed during a reported dispute over a cellular phone which Foster had told cop she purchased for the footballer for close to 20,000 at about 8.50 p.m. on October the 31st, 2019 at Limelight Plaza in Alfred Tree, St. Andrew. So to me, this looks as if it was a lover's beef went bad or just simply would say get out of hand because of course Foster was calling the footballer Clark and couldn't get her on the phone so of course I guess she was angry knowing that she had bought the footballer a phone yet she's not answering her so I guess when she saw her now and she telling her that many people trying to get her because the phone has been dropping signals so maybe that's why she didn't get to see the call she now in turn grabbing after the phone to see it but because Clark the footballer is more muscular than her basically he's her off you know what I mean I say no she not really sure of the phone you know cause maybe she go want to see if it's true she never get the call or not and probably she avoid letting her see if it's true or not but because she had the knife on her now she just grabbed out the knife thinking that like a jab probably wouldn't take her life because somehow i think i don't think she them so young i don't think she really want us to take her life for that but in using the knife you know say a flesh and metal and so things get out of hand very unfortunate a very talented upcoming footballer lost her life 
and this young girl just she was just barely in her 20s now she's going to spend a lot of time in prison so two wasted lives you hear them said the devil really fine work for eyeglass i swear anyway guys please remember to like comment and subscribe to my platform please love you all bye for now